Unleash the power of your training. Welcome to Turning Obstacles into Opportunities. Here are your hosts, Candace Sobrin and Adria Myers. So hello, ladies and gentlemen. So excited to be here today. Um, I, I don't know many of you, and so I ask you to keep typing your names in the chat so that we can see who's here and we can celebrate you. My name is Candace Sogren, and I am a lot of things. So before I jump into the topic of today, I'm just going to start off by introducing myself and telling you who I am. So first and foremost, I'm a mom. Uh, I have a two-year-old son named Ivor, and he is the light of my life. Second, I am the head of emerging sales at Marketa, which is a payments company that today is a very exciting day. We actually just rang the bell at NASDAQ today. So my company just went public today. Very, very exciting. Um, lots of years of hard work. And so, uh, so I'm so happy to be celebrating that with all of you here. Oh, thank you, Tanya. Tanya, come on camera, girl. You can totally come on camera. Um, finally, I am the founder and the CEO at Boston Breakthrough Academy. Um, BBA is a leadership training program for adults whose lives are already working. We work with a lot of lower to mid-level executives who are looking to level up in life. So who are looking to, like, they're always seeking, always seeking. What is that next level for me? So, Patricia, I see you shaking your head. So thank you for being, being that type of person. Um, and many, we work with many executives and many HR departments, actually, um, and training departments with uh, employees of theirs that are, are really superstars, that are on their way up, that have a very fast growth trajectory, and they're really looking to support them with soft skills, um, with learning how to manage teams, learning how to manage up, learning how to communicate at higher levels with executive teams. And so if that's you, would love to have you join the conversation. Um, and again, please feel free to come on camera. Finally, I am an angel investor. I invest in startup companies and I am a, a, a journalist and author. I author articles for Entrepreneur Magazine and I am publishing a book called Typhoon Honey, The Only Way Out is Through, The Way to Get Unstuck in Life. So would love to have each of you buy that book in July when, when it is published. So without further ado, why are we here today? Hi, Terry. Thanks for joining. We're here today to talk about shifting your environment. So I, I want to start off by just saying, and, and since I have three of you on camera with me, please feel free to join in and take yourselves off mute. This will be an interactive conversation. But by a show of hands, how many of you will, would say that this past year has been a ride, a roller coaster? Okay, it has been a ride. So this is a strange time that we live in. We've been 16 months without any social interaction. All of us have been in, have been sequestered in our four walls of our home. We haven't been able to see our family members and friends for a long period of time. And just now we're starting to open back up. And when we say open back up, what the heck does that mean? It's different for every person. It's different for every person. And so all of us are redefining what normal is right now, what normal looks like. Raise your hand if you're like, I have no idea what normal is. Okay, I don't know what normal is right now. And so, so we had a Memorial Day family event and we had some people over and we were like, is this okay? I don't know, you know, what questions do we ask? Is this okay? So, so we're redefining normal. And anytime that you're redefining more normal, this creates a natural discomfort, a natural discomfort in life. And so the purpose of today's conversation is going to be to create comfort in life, to create safety, to create happiness, joy, tranquility, whatever that is for you, you first get to give it away. You first get to give it away. And so I'm going to start off just with the three brave women who have joined me. And again, all of you are invited to, to come on camera, but with the three ladies who've joined, I'd like to ask you, what is it that you are wanting to get from life right now? Are you wanting more comfort, more safety, more social interactions, what is, whatever that is? So talk to me, Patricia, what is it that you're wanting to get from life right now? Um, if I could choose all the above, I would choose that because it just, it seems in the vacuum of the past 16 months, now that it is opening up, you just want to do everything. So, um, but I think reconnecting with friends, um, because that meant so much to me before the pandemic, that was really, you know, I had that tribe of friends. So being able to see them and really interact with them 
um, and do the things we used to do would be heartwarming and re-energizing, I think, for me personally and professionally. Thank you so much for sharing. So reconnecting, and, and that, I, I, that I raised my hand too. I want to reconnect with everyone. I want to hug strangers on the street. That's not appropriate, but I totally want to do that right now. So I, I get you. I see you, Patricia. Who else? What are, what are you wanting to get right now in life? And it could be a new job. It could be a raise. It could be a new car. It could be anything. So, so talk to me about what you're wanting to receive in life. What about you, Meredith? You know, I've been working remotely from home for the past years. So last year didn't affect me in terms of really seeing lots of people. It's been more family that I've missed getting to be with. And we're going to be having a big family reunion this July. We were supposed to have it last year. So just reconnecting in person with people that I haven't been able to see as much. Um, but in terms of business, I just love the people I've been meeting and I'm looking forward to meet more. So honestly, I get up every day excited about what, awesome. what life is, is bringing and, and kind of I've, I've learned to acquire this attitude of gratitude, no matter what, you know, oh, there there's something here to be happy about. There's something here I can learn. Um, and that just makes all the difference in how I experience every day. Meredith, you're like a plant. So it's, like, it's like Adria planted you in this room for, for me because that's actually what we're going to be talking about today. So thank you so much. So, so yes, and, and honestly, thank you, Meredith, for, for leading by example on what's possible. But I, I got to be honest, there's, there's got to be people in this room and there are certainly people in my workplace who are not right now. They are not able to be there. They're in a place that's they're struggling either in their marriage or with their kids because they've had kids climbing over their shoulders for the past 16 months. Amy, I see you shaking your head. Um, you know, they don't have any privacy. They can never turn off. Um, and so, so, so Amy, share, share a bit about, about, about what you're experiencing right now. Yes. Uh, well, I actually, I work, I work remotely before the pandemic and everything. Um, I had just switched to my job though. So I was adjusting to that new lifestyle and then everything shut down and I have my six year old son home with me all the time now. Um, and that's been quite an adjustment. Um, and I do feel like life kind of paused for a little bit. And I love that I've gotten to spend more time with him. But of course, it's affecting work. You know, I'm in meetings and I can hear him in the background. And it's trying to manage that balance. And now that we're starting to reintegrate him into everything and let him get a better social grasp. Um, and as to, I really think that my focus now is just growing. Uh, because I feel like I was at such a, stand, a standstill for so long. Um, that now I'm just looking, okay, where can I grow? Where can I now be open to things that I wouldn't have been open to before? Because my, pers my perspective has changed significantly since all of this happened. Um, so I think that I'm, I'm now back into a stage, um, that kind of like I was years ago when I first started in this career of, I think it's time for me to start to grow again and to continue to grow. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. So I'm hearing growth, family, reconnecting. Is there anything else that's on your mind that you're like, God, I would really like to have X? And I'll, I'll give you an example. For me, because I've been working with my husband in our home for the last 16 months, I would really like some alone time, honestly. So, so I would really like to, to, to have some, some distance and some peace because, because it's like we're on top of each other. So, so that's a personal one for me. Is there anything else that's coming up for the team? So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the opposite. I'm gonna say I'd like I'd like to have like a three day vacation by myself. Anything else, team? Anything else? What about you, Zach? Is what do I want in my life right now? Yeah, what do you want in your life? Um, increase my um, my client list. I want to you know grow the client list. I want to. Um, you know, stretch out into some different demographics, um, areas that I'm, I'm not familiar, not comfortable with and, and make my value known and be uncomfortable to make the ask. Awesome. Thank you. So, so I, I, I acknowledge you for already knowing that you get to get uncomfortable first in order to grow that, grow that client list. So this is great food for our conversation today. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is the purpose of today's talk? The purpose of today's talk is to get clear in your workplace, in your business, how is it that I can get what I want? And the answer is by giving it away. 
<laughs> by giving it away. And so we were just listening to Evan and, and the panel discussion, it was like, it was like he, he knew what was coming in my presentation. And so, so in order to be um, in an attitude of gratitude, like Meredith said, it, you know, in order to create what I want in life, I actually get to, I get to be giving it out to others. And so, so there's going to be a few tips I'm going to share with you today. And these are BBA tips. These are the types of things we talk about at BBA. And Zach is actually one of our coaches at BBA. So I'm so happy he's here as well. Um, and and if, this is all emotional intelligence or awareness training. So the first tip I'm going to offer to you is first tell your face. First tell your face. Now, what does that mean? When I, when I say, if you want it, if you want reconnection, if you want family, if you want alone time, if you want to increase your client list, if you want growth, first tell your face. What does that mean? Okay, I'll, I'll throw it at you, at you this time because we have, we have a silent audience. So, so if I talk about first tell your face, it means first you get to convince yourself that I'm living this life already. I'm living this life already. So I love when I'm talking to students at BBA and they're telling me I'm happy, but they look like this. I'm happy, I'm, I'm happy Candace. I, like life is great. And it's like, okay, would it be great if you would tell your face that? And, and what, I, what I'm sharing with this, particularly in a remote work environment, which many of us are in, we are constantly, we're constantly on camera, we're constantly on. And everything that we are feeling, all of our emotions are showing up on our face. And so when you walk into an environment, whether it's a, a conference like this, whether it is a meeting at work, and your face is telling a story that I'm tired, dejected, scared, nervous, that is what you're going to create. You can, you can guarantee that if you walk in tired, everyone in the room is going to walk out tired. If you walk in frustrated, everyone in the room is going to walk out frustrated. And so anytime that you're saying, okay, I am committed to creating family, Meredith, I'm committed to creating family. It's like, okay, great. I'm going to be constantly like, like reaching out, like, I'm so excited, daughter, that, that I get to see you on Tuesday. What more can I create? If, rather than, you know what? You said you were going to be here on Tuesday and you're not here. Guess what? She's not going to show up on Wednesday either. So the first thing I would, I would invite you to do is to tell your face, to ground yourself. We, call, we all call this grounding ourselves at BBA. Constantly ground yourself in where you want to go, where you're headed. Growth and is it Amy or Amy? Amy, okay. So you said growth. So so if you're coming into a meeting, if you're coming into to educational opportunities and you're sitting in the back of the room, not coming on camera, you're not gonna set yourself up for growth. So I acknowledge you already for doing that. Okay, so that's tip number one is tell your face, ground yourself in where you want to go rather than where you are right now. Okay. Number two is shifting a behavior. Shifting a behavior. So how do we shift behaviors? Well, first, and in shifting any behavior, you first get to determine what is my trigger? What is it that's triggering me? So does anybody have something that's coming up for you right now that's been triggering you in life, in work, in your business? Um, yes, Adria. My son. Okay, talk to me about it. Give, what is the trigger? What happens? Um, well, we adopted in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, wow. Um, and he's a teenager and building that relationship and figuring out personalities um, and lots of testing of boundaries has been extremely challenging. Okay. So, so what I'm hearing is a testing when he tests a boundary and is there a specific boundary? You can just give us an example. Uh, respect. Like respect. What, yeah. What like our expectation for respect and what he thinks is respectful. Okay, so let's even get more granular. Is there something like he rolls his eyes or? Yes. Okay, great. So when my son rolls his eyes, that's my trigger. What is your response? What is, what is so sorry, we're gonna talk about the difference between reaction and response. So what's your reaction when your son rolls his eyes? Uh, usually to get angry. To snap. So yes. when my son rolls his eyes, I snap and I scold. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. And what is his response to that? How does he react to you snapping? Usually he snaps back. Okay, great. So he snaps back. Okay, so this is a perfect opportunity. And we can do this in the workplace. We can do this um, in our families. Is we can literally shift our an entire behavior just by identifying the trigger. So every time my son rolls his eyes, changing your reaction to a response. This is a super simple one. I'm changing my reaction to response. And it must be something you can do in less than 30 seconds. Okay. okay.
because it's got to be, it's got to be a knee jerk thing that you're just going to do every single time. Mm -hmm. So what is one thing that you can do rather than snap and scold when he rolls his eyes? I could ignore it. You could ignore it. What would his reaction be to that? He probably wouldn't react at all because I'm not reacting. Okay. So what that's one, he could also continue to roll his eyes. Yep. Okay. So, so what are, what's another one? Let's, let's, let's just keep teasing this out. What's one more that you could do when my son rolls his eyes. I could, um, instead of snapping, I could say, I, I could just tell him how it makes me feel. Yeah. You could tell him how it makes you feel. Anything else? Any, any other suggestions team? This is, this is a team effort. So any other suggestions for what, what could it any be? Any other parents with eye rolling kids? What'd you say? I said, any other parents with eye rolling kids? Oh, I'm seeing somebody else come on. Roberta, thank you. So we've got, we've got some more eye rolling kids stories here coming in. So, so any other suggestions on when her son rolls his eyes, something that Adria can, can, can respond with? Responding is the ability to respond. Responsibility is the ability to respond. So you're choosing to respond rather than react. Mm -hmm. One is, wow, it really, it, it really hurts when I see you rolling your eyes. That's one thing you can do. Anything else? Roberta, did you have any suggestions? I would just ask why they're rolling their eyes. Sure, you could ask. And that's something you can do in less than 30 seconds. Hey, what's, what's, what's up? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's a very simple thing. You identify what the trigger is and get really granular with that trigger. So when, it's when he rolls his eyes, and I'm sure there's more. So Adrian, you can, you can tease this out for more. But oh, yeah. when this happens, my reaction is, so when X happens, my reaction is Y and instead it will be Z. Mm -hmm. And by that simple tweak, you will be, begin to create a shift, a dramatic shift in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's tip number two. Identify your trigger and choose a response rather than a reaction. And the final, the final one is what Meredith alluded to at the beginning of this workshop. And that is coming from a place of gratitude, coming from a place of gratitude. And so, so anytime you are, you are feeling frustrated, you're, you're angry with another person. The invitation is to say, what is one thing I'm grateful for about this person? What's one thing I'm grateful for about this person? So is anyone finding themselves frustrated, both at, either at home or at work currently this week with a coworker, with a spouse, with a child? You talked about your child, Adria. So let's take another example. Anything, anything that's frustrating you this week? What about, what about, okay, Zach, you came yeah, up. I, I, I was frustrated with a process of communication with a proposal that I sent out a couple days ago. And I, I was frustrated by the, by the process of the communication coming back. Okay, so by the process of the communication, can you be a bit more specific? Because that it was, yeah, the uh, person who I sent the proposal to didn't get back to me. The party got back to me, and then we played text tag, you know, in, with these messages until finally I was able to get in touch with the person directly and, and reach a, a conclusion. Okay, so a lack of direct communication. Yeah. Okay, a lack of direct communication with, with the direct party. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so I'm frustrated because this person is not communicating with me directly. I'm getting text messages. I'm getting third parties and like, it's creating a, a complete breakdown in efficiency plus a breakdown in probably trust because, because we're, we're working in like building a partnership together. If you're submitting a proposal, what is one thing you can be grateful for about that scenario, about that person, about that process? What's one thing that you can find gratitude in? Oh, I'm, I'm much happier to be frustrated while submitting proposals that advance my business than to not be frustrated or do, that's a better thing to be frustrated for than having no business. So, so thank you. That's, that's, that's great. And, but what's one thing that you could say, I'm grateful for this person, the, like the person who's not responding to you. What about this whole scenario? Can you be grateful for and that can you actually be grateful for them about? Yeah. Um, I am grateful for them because I understand what challenges they're taking on and that I know that that they're not responding to me because they are building something incredible. Like I, I was in relationship with this executive director. I know what they're working on. The reason they're not getting in touch with me is because they're in the eye of the hurricane. And I know that that means that they were advancing their mission elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. And so, so when we talk about an attitude of gratitude, Meredith started off with this. 
What we mean by it is every time you find yourself frustrated, I invite you to write down something that you're grateful about the other person for. I'm grateful for you, Jim, whoever is it is that's who, who opened the proposal process, for giving me the opportunity to respond to this proposal, for having a big enough idea that I'm excited to be working with you, for being so busy that you actually need my support. This is the exact reason why, I, why you're doing the RFP in the first place. And then communicating that gratitude to the person. Because if you're frustrated, they're frustrated too. They're frustrated too. And oftentimes the, the basis for frustration is a lack of feeling a lack of acknowledgement or appreciation. The reason that any one of us gets frustrated with another person is because both parties are likely feeling a lack of appreciation or acknowledgement. So if you can come at any of these, any of these triggering situations, with an opportunity to respond oh, with gratitude, that opens up an entirely new path for your relationship with the other person. So tip number three oh, is to identify oh, and write it down, identify yeah. something you can be grateful for and to share that gratitude with the person that you're frustrated with. Okay. Now we have about five minutes remaining. And so what I'm going to do with the five minutes that are remaining is I'm gonna say, why does this matter guys? Why are we even talking about, this? particularly as we're talking about training, as we're talking about, you know, corporate environments, businesses and workplaces, why are these sort of things important? And Roberta, I am hearing your background. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on the hot seat. Why is this important in a workplace? Sorry. I have the same frustration that you do. I'm working on the same space with my husband. <laughs> no, I, I get you, girl. I get you. My husband is literally on the other side of the store right now. But, I yeah. don't have an office anymore. He's overtaken it through this pandemic. That's been my biggest frustration. Okay. And Sorry. so which of these three tips are you going to apply in this exact scenario today with your husband? Um, I don't. I'm I'm pretty even keeled and don't get frustrated. So your question about what had frustrated me this week wasn't really um, something that bothers me. I think that um, for me, um, identifying issues um, and, and putting that face on that you had mentioned at the beginning, um, I'm very expressive and I get frustrated um, with stupidity a lot. <laughs> and I think that, you know, it's all telling on my face, you know, trying to be more neutral, I think would help me a lot. Okay, great. And that would support you in your, in your client environment, work environment is, is working. On yeah, your definitely. Okay, great. And, and any other, any others of where, where you're like, oh, this is one that I'm actually going to take into my workplace, into, into my family, into my community. Um, Go the, for it, Anna. The shifting the behavior is my, my biggest struggle. Um, I, I, I can identify what I'm grateful for, even in that person, in that moment. Um, you know, I can check my face, but uh, my, when I'm triggered, I tend to just react. And I lose the response in that reaction. And so instead of them hearing, you know, the, a solution or a possible, you know, connection that we could have made through that, um, what they're hearing is my frustration and it all gets lost in that reaction. Um, so the whole message is lost and the whole effort is, is for naught. So I think that that's the one that I will be taking back the most, just shifting that behavior and just pause, you know, take a breath and then respond to get a solution rather than just to get a reaction from them also. Amy, I, that, that, so, so if you literally, if that's the only thing you take away from this workshop, you'll already begin to see dramatic changes in your relationships and conversations and probably with the people who matter the most to you. Yeah. And, and so, so no, no relationship is lost. No, even with an argument with your son or whatnot, no relationship is lost. Everyone is looking to be acknowledged. And so if you're feeling you know, whenever I, I use this with my husband a lot, whenever I'm feeling like, oh, I'm feeling so unheard, I write a letter from him to me about how he must be feeling unheard. And then I give him the letter <laughs> because I'm like, okay, this is probably how you're feeling. So, so is it right? Like, is that sim similar, similar to how you're feeling? He's like, yes. And then we can actually start over again. So, so thank you, Amy, for that.
I thank you all very much for joining me today. Thank you for making this interactive. This would have been so much less interesting if I was just talking to myself for the last 30 minutes. So, so thank you for being in contribution. You've already shifted your day by being in contribution today. And I acknowledge you for, for choosing to shift your environment.